There it goes. These are some of the coolest little engines I've ever seen. Originally, I was just gonna jump right into a crazy episode with this thing, but I was so impressed with how this thing looked and sounded in that previous video, I decided to modify it first by building a twin compound supercharger setup, giving this thing some forced induction so it can breathe. Then I'm gonna run this thing full throttle as hard as I can with as much boost as possible while filming it with the high speed camera in slow motion, just in case something crazy happens. I think you're gonna like what I have in mind. Let me get started. Okay, I'm all done. This is the way it came out. And it's not very often that I'm happy with the way that something I built came out. But in this case, I would say I'm pretty happy. It's hard to convey on camera how mean this engine looks right now. Here's how I have my superchargers set up. I have two superchargers in a compound configuration. And if you're not familiar with what compounding is, whether it's superchargers or turbochargers, let's just say for numbers sake, each one of these superchargers makes 10 PSI of boost. That means the first supercharger will boost that pressure up from the ambient pressure to 10 PSI, 
and then the second supercharger will boost that 10 psi up to 20 psi and that's going to be our intake pressure that's the idea of compounding and compound turbochargers work the same way mostly i've seen them in diesel applications but i'm assuming you can use them on gas too i have a fuel pressure reference coming off of the intake manifold here that's pressurizing the fuel tank in relation to how much pressure is in the intake. So what that means is, as the pressure goes up in the intake, our fuel system pressure goes up and the amount of fuel going in the carburetor increases as the boost increases. Looking at my supercharger pulleys, my pulley ratio is about five to one, which means that for every one rotation of the crankshaft, we have five rotations of the supercharger impeller. However, if this isn't enough, the way I designed this is to be able to easily switch out the pulleys if I need to, if I decide to speed up those superchargers, maybe double or triple the speed. I got the fuel tank full, the glow plugs are hot. Without further ado, let me get this thing started up and see if it sounds as mean as it looks. see a problem already my supercharger pulley is coming loose i had to stop it there because my supercharger pulley was becoming unthreaded don't ask me why but this supercharger impeller came with right hand threads even though it turns in a counterclockwise direction to make boost that makes absolutely no sense i think it should have left hand threads so it's trying to tighten itself as it gets resistance from that impeller i'm going to put some red loctite on here and get this thing fired back up one more thing i did do i hooked up the radiator which I forgot to hook up in that last run, but I got it all hooked up, ready to go. Let me start it up again. Let's see what it does. That was a short run, but man, did that thing sound mean. And that's exactly why I have the high-speed camera set up to capture failures like that. It looks like my belt tensioner blew apart. I think I just need Loctite on everything. I could hear the supercharger whine after the engine shut off while the superchargers were still spinning. I couldn't hear that with the engine running. Another thing is that the boost pressure was pushing out my intake pipe. All right, here we go. I got my pulley all fixed up. My intake tube pressed back into the supercharger. I made some adjustments there so it'll hold the pressure and it won't come out. And I added a little throttle extension because I don't really feel safe having my fingers right next to the engine just in case something happens like this happened. Maybe something's gonna happen back here. All right, let me get it started. Hopefully third time's a charm.
like all four cylinders are firing. And if I look at the thermal camera, I see some heat. Oh, what is that? That's heating up. Oh, Jesus. That's my idler pulley that's heating up. What the heck? I don't know why that's heating up like that. It's kind of weird. That sucker's burning hot. I just put some motor oil in there. I'm going to try this yet again. Didn't get much of a run out of it, but let's see what happens this time. heat coming off my radiator that's for sure actually I think my water's starting to boil it's definitely overheating even though I have the radiator with the fan we're at 235 degrees oh yeah we got pressure in that cooling system those hoses are about to pop I need to get this thing cooled down really quickly oh man oh there it goes Ah, I knew it. Overheating. Well, I guess that extra boost pressure definitely had an effect on how much heat the engine is producing. Everything is all needs to be cleaned up now. Whoa. All right. Well, I think that went pretty well. There's a few things that I need to change before using this engine in that project that I have coming up. And the first thing I think I need to change is the size of these superchargers. At this point, these superchargers are running beyond their maximum RPM for this style compressor. And that makes me think they're just too small. I mean, this is a four cylinder engine. It's not a single cylinder. So I think I'm gonna have to go larger on the superchargers. I'm not sure how much pressure it made because I didn't look at the footage yet, but when I took a peek, it was around three PSI. I wanna see more like eight, 10 or 12 PSI, something crazy to either blow the intake off or make some serious power with this little engine. The second thing is I need to do something with this radiator and fan setup because even though the boost pressure wasn't what I wanted to see, it was enough to increase the air charge in the fuel to the point where this engine was overheating the stock radiator. Next time you see this engine, I'll have all those changes done. One more thing before you go, I have a project that I've been working on with my sister that I wanted everybody to check out. I came up with the idea and I designed this application around the way a guy's mind works. For instance, if you're in the store and somebody sent you a whole list of items to pick up in the store for them in a text message, you basically copy and paste that text into the application hit search, it deciphers the entire text message and lists out all of the items in list form in chronological order. So for instance, if you're on your way out of the supermarket and you gotta go somewhere and then your girlfriend, baby mama, whoever, sends you another text, hey, you know what? Are you still in the store? I got like five more items I want you to find. And you're like, oh my God, I gotta be somewhere, I gotta go, I hate being in the store. You can take that text message, put it in the app, find it, look for it and get out of the store quickly. That's the idea. It's different than anything else that I've seen out there. It's an app called Text to Shop and we have the first version ready to release. So I wanted everybody to check it out first. It is still under development. I'll leave a link in the description below. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about this episode and this project and this build. That's about it. See you in the next video. Adios. The first thing I'm gonna do is rip this apart, take a look at what's inside and how it's made, and get an idea for how much extra power this thing can handle. Let's tear this thing down. Now that I got the key shaft out of the way, you can see all the head bolts below. Alright, let's take a look at this. I left the carburetors and exhaust pipes on just to get an idea how it looks when it's set up inside the engine. Oh, there's a head gasket right there. Oh, look at that. I didn't realize it's a head gasket. There's a head gasket. I don't remember that too much, but this really resembles a 2JZ head. Take a look at the block. It's just an open back design. You can see a coolant passages there. It's like some stainless steel cylinder sleeves. 
Two what? Two bones. Open up the bottom. I don't see any main bearings. There's only a bearing in the front and a bearing in the back. I mean, the drones are cut on the crankshaft, but there's no support there. And for those of you who are asking how this engine gets oil, it is through the fuel. And apparently it really works because look at the bottom of that crankcase. That is running in oil. Not even having any oil to this. This is all oil from the fuel. Really? There you go. That's the inside of this engine. And that's as far as I'm going to take this apart. We need to design things pretty simple.